Let's look at an example of calculating a change in internal energy of a chemical reaction using what's called a bomb type calorimeter. Now, you may recall <clears throat> that we've already learned what a coffee cup calorimeter is. It's, <clears throat> it's a device in which you can measure the heat flow into or out of a chemical change at constant pressure and constant volume conditions. In this case, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat flow into or out of the system at constant pressure, which has been defined as the change in enthalpy. So the change in internal energy in this case equals the change in enthalpy equals the heat at constant pressure. There's another situation in which we can use a coffee cup calorimeter. We have constant pressure, but we have a change in volume. This occurs when we have uh, the production of a gas or the consumption of a gas, and so we're going to have an expansion or a compression. In this case, the change in internal energy, as we've seen previously, does not equal the change in enthalpy. Rather, the change in internal energy equals the change in enthalpy plus the work that's done either to the, um, by the system or on the system due to the expansion of the compression. In this case, the change in internal energy can be calculated easily by uh, measuring the change in temperature and calculating the heat uh, flow uh, at constant pressure based on the um, specific heats of the calorimeter and surroundings, and uh, then minus, uh, then we calculate work, which is just uh, P delta V work. Now, in this case, when you have a chemical change, it's uh, easier to uh, note the change in the gas moles than the volume because it's impossible to measure normally. And so you can just look at the chemical change and based on the relationship that PV equals NRT, assume the gas that is uh, behaving ideally, um, <clears throat> then P delta V is the same as delta NRT, uh, where T would be constant and R would be the gas uh, constant in, uh, in units of joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so this bomb calorimeter is a third type of a calorimetry. In this case, um, we're measuring the internal energy of the system, and in the bomb uh, calorimeter case, we are, uh, the chemical reaction is occurring in a steel container, which we would call the bomb, which even though a gas may be produced or used, um, in this case, the volume is held constant. So we are forcing um, our work to equal to be to be equal to zero, even if uh, work could have been done had the uh, the device been allowed to expand or the gas been allowed to ex expand or compress. So in this way, all of the energy that would have gone into the work is forced into heat, and so we can calculate the change in internal energy is going to equal the heat flow into or out of the system. And mind you, this is not QP, this is not a uh, change in enthalpy because the pressure in this case absolutely does not remain constant. So pressure is not constant. Alrighty, so in this case we use what's called a bomb calorimeter. So let's, let's take a look at an example a problem. Alright, it says compare the energy of combustion of hydrogen to methane using bomb calorimeter with a heat capacity of 11.3 kilojoules per degree C. When a 1.5 gram sample of methane gas was burned in excess oxygen in the calorimeter, the temperature increased by 7.3 degrees Celsius. In another experiment, when a 1.15 gram sample of hydrogen gas was burned with excess oxygen, the temperature increase was 14.3. Calculate the energy of combustion per gram for hydrogen and methane. So in this case, um, we're using our bomb calorimeter um, to uh, calculate the energy of combustion for these reactions. And so it's going to simply be, excuse me, methane burning in oxygen to, let's see here, what was the first one? Methane, the methane CH4 plus O2 gives uh, CO2 plus 2H2O, and there's two oxygens there. and that's balanced. In this case, we have a 1.5 gram sample of methane. We're burning it. Um, the temperature change, the temperature change in this case is given as 7.3 degrees Celsius. Um, in the other example, we have um, hydrogen gas burning to give water. And so that balanced 
would be um, 2H2, there we go. And in this case, we have 1.15 gram sample. And the change in temperature here is, uh, let's see, 14.3 degrees Celsius from the problem. All right, so we're given the amount and we're given the um, change in temperature. And in this case, we're given the heat capacity <clears throat> of the calorimeter. All right, so the heat capacity of the calorimeter, <clears throat> let's move down here, we have some space to work, um, <clears throat> is uh, C equals 11.3 kilojoules per degree C. What this means is, this is the heat capacity for the calorimeter, it means um, every time the calorimeter absorbs 11.3 kilojoules of heat energy, the temperature is going to go up by one degree Celsius, okay? So if we want to figure out how much heat energy is given off by this equation here, the methane equation, then um, all we need to do in this case is calculate, or excuse, yeah, calculate Q is going to be equal to the calorimeter constant times the change in temperature. Mind you, there's no mass here because this calorimeter constant, this heat capacity of the cal calorimeter, is, um, is calibrated to the, the calorimeter specifically, all of it, the, the water associated with it, the steel, everything. All right, so it's just the calorimeter constant times the change in temperature. And so for uh, methane, for the case of methane, um, the CH4 example, it was just uh, Q is going to equal 11.2 three kilojoules per degree Celsius times the change in temperature there is 7.3 degrees Celsius and that equals 83 kilojoules. All right. Then for the uh, hydrogen example, Q is going to equal the calorimeter constant. Again, we're using the same calorimeter, so the constant is the same, degree C times the change in temperature there was 14.3 degrees Celsius. So in this case, Q equals, let's see, 162 kilojoules, all right? And then the, that's how much heat was liberated in this case, and this is how much heat was liberated in this case. So, um, uh, so that's how much heat was absorbed by the calorimeter. The question was calculate the energy of combustion per gram for both hydrogen and methane. So this is the amount of heat for uh, 1.15 grams, and this is for 1.50 grams for this one. So what you want to do is, for the heat of combustion um, for uh, methane, and I'm going to work it, move right up here, because I'm out of space here, it's going to be the heat of combustion is going to be, uh, per gram, is going to be the amount that was liberated, kilojoules, divided by the amount that was burned, which is 1.5 grams, and that's going to equal um, 55, uh, yeah, 55 kilojoules per gram combusted, and we're going to assign that a negative sign because this is the heat that was given off by the uh, methane upon, gram, upon the combustion of one gram of methane. Okay, and then we'll do the similar deal here for the hydrogen example. It's um, just a heat of combustion for hydrogen is just going to equal the heat that was combusted in that little experiment divided by the amount, which for hydrogen was 1.15 grams. And so the heat of combustion for hydrogen is going to be 141 kilojoules per gram. And that also is a negative value because that's the heat that's given off by the combustion. That's the amount of heat that was absorbed by the calorimeter, but it's the amount of heat that's given off by the system. So you can see that um, gram per gram, hydrogen has a higher heat of combustion than methane. When you burn hydrogen gram per gram, you can get more energy out than when you burn methane.